To all such, I offer the surest and sweetest remedy that I know. It is found in the clarion call the Savior of the world himself gave. He said it in the beginning of his ministry, and he said it in the end. He said it to believers, and he said it to those who were not so sure. He said to everyone, whatever their personal problems might be, come unto me. In this promise, that introductory phrase, come unto me, is crucial. It is the key to the peace and rest we seek. Indeed, when the resurrected Savior gave his sermon at the temple to the Nephites in the New World, he began, Blessed are the poor in spirit who come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, he said. It seems clear that the essence of our duty and the fundamental requirement of our mortal life is captured in these brief phrases from any number of scenes in the Savior's mortal ministry. He is saying to us, trust me, learn of me, do what I do. Then, when you walk where I am going, he says, we can talk about where you're going and the problems you face and the troubles you have. If you will follow me, I will lead you out of darkness, he promises. I will give you answers to your prayers. I will give you rest to your souls. There can and will be plenty of difficulties in life. Nevertheless, the soul that comes unto Christ, who knows his voice and strives to do as he did, finds a strength, as our hymn says, beyond our own. The Savior reminds us that he has graven us upon the palms of his hands. Considering the incomprehensible cost of the crucifixion and atonement, I promise you he is not going to turn his back on us now. When he says to the poor in spirit, come unto me, he means he knows the way out. And he knows the way up. He knows it because he's walked it. He knows the way because he is the way. I think also of that night when Christ rushed to the aid of his frightened disciples, walking as he did on the water to get to them, calling out, it is I, be not afraid. Peter exclaimed, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Christ's answer to him was as it always is every time. Come, he said. While his eyes were fixed upon the Lord, the wind could toss his hair and the spray could drench his robes, but all was well. He was coming to Christ. It was only when his faith wavered and fear took control, only when he removed his glance from the master to look at the furious waves and the ominous black gulf beneath, only then did he begin to sink into the sea. May we all especially the poor in spirit, come unto him and be made whole, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen.